In the final video of today, I am going to describe a little bit and maybe it might be a little messy because I don't have a script for this video. Um, something about authority and something about how to figure out if a source that I'm looking at is worthwhile or not. And I'm also going to be very, very concise and very, very um, uh, direct about thinking about materials, if that makes sense. Um, the information that we get exposed to could be coming from any publisher, it could be coming from any author, and it's really up to us as individuals in our research process to think about what makes a high quality source. When we're thinking about our research, we can think about things as a balance or a scale. We can have research that has existed, information that has been published that supports our research, and then the other stuff, the stuff that might not support our research, but also is valuable because it shows a counterpoint or it can describe what we are not looking for or what is opposing what we are looking for. Um, for example, if I was to do a uh, research project on fake news, I might select um, high quality authoritative news from a publication that is well regarded throughout the world and I might pair that with a news source that has been identified as fake news. Um, since we're on the topic of fake news, uh, the website Snopes, which I will visit right now really quickly, Snopes. If I go to Snopes, I will actually, um, this is a fact checking website. I will be exposed to, well, even look at this top story. Um, information on different types of true and false pieces of information that exist on the internet and have surfaced through social media, memes, et cetera, et cetera. So you might find uh, information about those fake websites there. Um, how do I know that uh, Snopes is great? Well, if I read about .com, uh, I can actually go into the team. I can look at the editorial board and see all of their perspectives, the methodology for how they come across their conclusions and explanations, um, the topics they choose, the rating systems they choose, the sourcing, and so on and so forth. <clears throat> so Snopes is a great resource. Another thing to think about is what gets published and why. So obviously uh, capitalism runs rampant all around the globe in 2017 and thus people are trying to make money left and right in various ways, shapes and forms. Um, money is made in different ways, of course. You have people that are selling advertisements, people that are selling products, people that are selling services, of course, but then there's other ways of making money. For example, um, someone might write a grant to try to get money from an institution that has money to give. And so they might apply for that grant with the stipulation that they're going to be publishing a report on something that demonstrates to that funding institution that what they uh, researched is in line with the mission or vision of that funding institution. So there are different ways. There's a realm or a, a, a um, um, there is a spectrum of how uh, money gets made and information gets created and then sold. Um, how does that play into what I'm talking about today with high quality information sources? If we search for websites that are .com, so using a .com domain, well, .coms are the easiest domains to buy. So uh, they are easy, meaning they are inexpensive. Um, that being said, there may or may not be good information on the .com websites. I mean, you might get some really good information from a Facebook social media post or uh, a newspaper. But remember, those newspapers have editorial boards. Um, those Facebook or those social media companies are funded by and by certain people and represent certain value systems as well. Um, on the other hand, if we search for .gov websites, those are governmental websites. Governments, of course, will have their own biases, but they are fairly more transparent 
ideally anyway, with where the money is coming in and where it's going out. And you're going to get different degrees of information, different types of information based on um, who is funding those websites. In this case, who is funding the government. So you might be looking for um, more objective reports or more objective uh, descriptions or more, um, uh, more societal level uh, pieces of information that go into um, everything from legal precedence, precedence to, uh, well, in the case of archives.org.gov, um, preserving specific types of information. You're just going to get a different array of information out there. Um, similarly, you might add .edu. Now, .edu is going to show you even more types of information that you wouldn't necessarily get in .com. You might have exhibits designed by librarians. Um, you might have uh, events that are hosted at academic institutions. Um, you might have all sorts of uh, educational uh, resources that are available. I will say that .edu domains have to be um, they can't be just registered by anyone like a .com. There is an actual editorial process for getting a EDU domain approved. So that's something to think about when you're thinking about authenticity and integrity. It certainly helps too when you think about publishers as um, who is publishing. So if I go to this Wellesley uh, library page, I know that it's coming from Wellesley and I know that the um, Wellesley Library, because it's here, it's, it's described as being created by the Wellesley librarians, that they are the ones who are creating this work. And so at least they're being transparent about who they may be, who what their biases may be, what their perspective is. Alternatively, um, if I go to a .com page that has, you know, Black Lives Matter blank um, and is describing something about Black Lives Matter, something good, something bad, something neutral, they may come out and say, well, I'm a newspaper. Well, I am a uh, organization affiliated with Black Lives Matter, or I am um, you know, a support group of Black Lives Matter, or so on and so forth. Or um, you know, they may say, well, we're a white supremacist group that is totally anti-Black Lives Matter, and that's why our website, Black Lives Matter Sucks, uh, is all about that. Um, so there may be very direct representations of those owners of those .com website addresses, but not necessarily. So be aware of the transparency of who is publishing this information. And also, if you really wanna take the next step, try to verify that this information is um, can be followed up or can be investigated. So for example, if you go to Wellesley EDU, will you be able to find this page by exploring from the Wellesley EDU website and verifying that this page hasn't just been put up here by some random folks that have access to designing web, web pages who are trying to impersonate the librarians. Um, in the case of librarians, I don't think that happens very often, but in the case of fake news, um, there are often a lot of fake news websites that try to imitate or impersonate the non-fake or the actual uh, reporting agencies. And they even create websites that look very similar. For example, The Onion, which is a humor website and has been historically all about humorous news, uh, may put up um, information related to fake, or may put up a article that looks like a real article, but is in fact uh, farce. It is in fact um, a humorous parody of uh, an actual news part article. And in the case of The Onion, most people know that it's fake, but in the case of other news sites that are trying to have some uh, effect in the world and have some political or social agenda, they might be doing that for specific influential purposes. There are a lot of other things that I can talk about in terms of authenticity. Those are some basic skills that you might explore as you're conducting research. I hope you found it interesting. If you have any questions or want to talk further, send an email to library at lwtech.edu. Thanks for watching and happy researching.